Wow, so you finally reached that point in your career where you want to find out what the nerve of the pterygoid canal, also known as the vidian nerve, is. Um, it's one of those things we tend to put off, you know, some of us uh, teach anatomy for 20 years and make hundreds of videos online teaching anatomy and then decide to finally figure out what it is. But you don't have to follow that route. <laughs> Um, the reason it's so awkward is because it's in a very awkward place inside the skull. It's actually very simple. In fact, I've, I've made a big 3D printed thing to help you see where it is. We'll see where the pterygoid canal is. We'll talk about how the nerve forms, where it goes, what it does. Shouldn't take us very long, all right? It's all about the skull, so Pterygoid refers to the pterygoid plates in the sphenoid bone, so we need to look at those. And the nerve that we're interested in is actually formed from two petrosal nerves, and the petrous part of the temporal bone is in here, so we need to consider where that is, and then we'll talk about where those two nerves come from and where they go to, and we're done, right? Easy. Okay, right, sphenoid bone first then. The sphenoid bone is a very central bone in the skull. It's here, it's a single bone, it's unpaired, it's in the midline, and it kind of sends out like a butterfly shape of bone on either side. And then we're looking inside the cranial cavity here, uh, we have these fossae, these depressions. So this is the posterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa, and anterior cranial fossa. And the sphenoid bone is making up you know, a fair bit of the middle cranial fossa. So if I turn this around, this is actually a real skull because the canal doesn't really appear on the plastic skulls, but you'll see there's a problem on this one as well. Anyway, but as we turn this around, under here, there's the sphenoid bone again. So very central in there. It's at the posterior orbit, um, posterior nasal cavity, and these plates down here, these are those pterygoid plates. They're part of the sphenoid bone. Pteri refers to wings. Oid is shaped. These are the wing-shaped parts of the sphenoid bone. So these are the pterygoid plates or the pterygoid processes, right? So anything pterygoid in the deep face is going to be associated with these guys. So this is a, a real skull. But if I grab a plastic skull, which has exploded a little bit, so all the bones are separated so you can see them more easily. Um, let me take out the mandible. So, oh, actually you can tilt this one, can't you? There we go, so there's the face. Tilt the face back. That yellow bone there, that is the sphenoid bone. That's what I mean by a single, unpaired, midline bone kind of winging out to either side. Anyway, these are the these bits that are extending inferiorly, those are the pterygoid processes there. So it's in a tricky position. I've got another sphenoid bone. Now this one I 3D printed uh, to be, I think it's double size. I printed this especially for you and the 500 students a week I teach. Um, and being larger and also separate means that we can see bits of it more easily. So can you see how uh, so this is the posterior sphenoid bone, this is anterior, so that's the anatomical position. And if I tilt it up, just like I did the last one, you can see those pterygoid plates there, right? And we're going to spin this around now, so if we spin it around posteriorly, we're inside the cranial cavity here, right? And if I spin it around that away, we're in the deep face on this side. Uh, so if we turn it around and look inside the cranial cavity, there is an opening, and that is the opening of the pterygoid canal. And if I put a pipe cleaner through this pterygoid canal, it's a canal because it's a long bony tube, it's not just a foramen. It pops out there in the deep face. Uh, and the other major structure that we find here that is pterygo is the um, pterygopalatine ganglion, which also sometimes gets called the sphenopalatine ganglion. That's the old name, pterygoid, is obviously part of the sphenoid bone. But the pterygopalatine ganglion is here. One of the four parasympathetic ganglia of the face. But that's the pterygoid canal. So now, 
my pipe cleaner has become the nerve of the pterygoid canal. Um, it's also called the vidian canal, so this gets called the nerve of the vidian canal or the vidian nerve. Uh, so what is it and where would we find that in a real skull? Okay, so they're both in the anatomical position there. Whoop. They're still both in the same anatomical position. Can you see the sphenoid bone? Look, there's the cella turcica there. There's the cella turcica there. I've got to be very careful with these bones. Um, and you can see how it's much larger, right? But you can see where the nerve of the pterygoid canal is here. It would be, <laughs> it's way in there. So there's the mid middle cranial fossa. And there's the middle cranial fossa on that side. We have a number of foramina. Um, the one you can see there, which I'm going to label, that's foramen rotundum. That also goes to the deep face. And the superior orbital fissure. So the superior orbital fissure leads to the eye. The foramen rotundum leads to the deep face. And then we've got foramen lacerum down there. And right in there, right where foramen lacerum is, right down there. So we, we say that it's um, medial and inferior to foramen rotundum, but there is a tiny canal in there. And that is the pterygoid canal. And I can't see it. Maybe I'll see it when I'm editing, when I've zoomed in, but with my glasses on, with good light, I am struggling to see it in there because it's in such a little confined space. But that's where the pterygoid canal is. So that's where the nerve of the pterygoid canal starts. And I said there were two petrosal nerves. There's the deep petrosal nerve and the greater petrosal nerve. Now, deep petrosal nerve plus greater petrosal nerve equals nerve of the pterygoid canal. Those two nerves come together and they make that nerve of the pterygoid canal. We've got lots of little nerves in the face and they start off, they're, they're cranial nerves, so they're coming out of the brainstem and they're, they're finding their ways through the bone to get to the face. And of course the nerves formed as the bones formed. So they, they all formed together and they've made these little cracks and fissures and found their little ways out. And if I look at a whole bunch of real skulls, this will all look a little bit different in each of them, but that's what's happening. So what are those two petrosal nerves then? Oh, what does petrosal refer to? Well, we're going a little bit further back. This lump here, this is the petrous part of the temporal bone. That's the temporal bone. This is the petrous part. It's like, you know, petrified like a rocky ridge. In there are the structures of the inner ear. In there is the facial nerve and the vestibulocochlear nerve. We're interested in the facial nerve today, cranial nerve seven. So those petrosal nerves are essentially associated with the petrous part of the temporal bone. Let's do the easy one first. Okay, big eye model. It if we turn this around, the reason I've got this one out is because posterior to the eye is the internal carotid artery. And that internal carotid artery, that's in that bit that we were looking at on the skull earlier. It's, it's right there. And what we can see on this model is we've got these lines painted on the internal carotid artery. These are sympathetic nerves, sympathetic fibers. Now the sympathetic nerves have come from the spinal cord in thoracic levels, mostly. And they've worked their way up the neck. Now sympathetic nerves go everywhere in the body, pretty much, because they're gonna innovate like the smooth muscle of blood vessels to control flow of blood around the body. Um, and the way they get up into the cranial cavity is they surround the internal carotid artery. This is like a carotid plexus. So they run with the internal carotid artery up into the skull, into that middle cranial fossa. And some of those sympathetic neurons, they come together and they form a bundle of neurons. And we call a bundle of neurons a nerve. And we call this bundle of sympathetic neurons the deep petrosal nerve. So the deep petrosal nerve is a sympathetic nerve it's going to innovate smooth muscles of blood vessels in the face. So it's going to control blood flow to the mucosa in the, in the nose, for example, and blood flow elsewhere in the face and have other functions, you know, general sympathetic stuff. But blood flow is a good one to, to hang your hat on. Oh, that's so heavy, that model, but it's a good one. Right, back to the skull. So our deep petrosal nerve is in there. Now, the hard one. 
the greater petrosal nerve. So this is the petrous part of the temporal bone. Um, there's an internal acoustic meatus there, and like I said, in there runs the facial nerve and the vestibulocochlear nerve. The facial nerve, cranial nerve seven, the weepy, snotty, dribbly nerve of the face, and it has other jobs too. Inside, so as it runs into the petrous part of the temporal bone, in there, it will give off a number of branches, and those branches will find their way ways out through various little cracks and holes and what have you. And there's one nerve that comes out, and it goes out through a little hole, um, and that nerve is the greater petrosal nerve. And what we find in the greater petrosal nerve are parasympathetic fibres, preganglionic parasympathetic neurons, because that's a big part of the facial nerve's job. Um, so preganglionic parasympathetic fibres have been carried from the brainstem in the facial nerve into the petrous part of the temporal bone. They leave as a separate branch, that is the greater petrosal nerve. They leave through a little hole. It's called like the hiatus or something. It's just a little hole, you know, we, we love naming everything. Um, and then it is in that same space there, right next to foramen lacerum. So we've got the, deeper, the deep petrosal nerve, sympathetic, and the greater petrosal nerve, parasympathetic, right next to each other. They join up and they become the nerve of the pterygoid canal or the vidian nerve. So it's a mixed nerve of sympathetic and parasympathetic fibres. Now the sympathetic neurons, they, these are postganglionic sympathetic neurons. Their last ganglion was, will have been a cervical ganglion. So those sympathetic neurons within the nerve of the pterygoid canal will run through that canal to the deep face and then they'll run off directly to their targets. Whereas the parasympathetic nerves, these are preganglionic. So they're gonna run through the pterygoid canal as part of the nerve of the pterygoid canal to the deep face where we find the pterygopalatine ganglion and the paratopalatine ganglion is there as a collection of parasympathetic nerve cell bodies. So they synapse there. So the action potential from those preganglionic parasympathetic nerves they get passed on to a postganglionic parasympathetic neuron that runs from the pterygopalatine ganglion off to other structures in the face, most notably to the lacrimal gland, but also to the nasal mucosal glands and other bits and bobs. Like I said, I said the facial nerve is the weepy, snotty, dribbly nerve of the face. And this is how those parasympathetic fibers of the facial nerve get to the lacrimal glands to cause you to weep, and how they get to the glands of the nasal mucosa and the palate to make you produce snot. And of course, we said the sympathetic nerves affect blood flow, which also happens when you know, when you get inflammation and increased blood flow, and anyway, snotty nose, blocked nose, that sort of thing, right? Anyway, so that is the anatomy of the nerve of the pterygoid canal, the vidian nerve. It receives sympathetic nerves from the deep petrosal nerve, the easy one. It receives parasympathetic nerves from the greater petrosal nerve, the hard one, and they come together to form a new nerve. And it's just a route for those fibers to get into the deep face so they can get to these structures. The location of the pterygoid canal is in the, you know, I guess described as the, the medial pterygoid plate, but that's it there. So it's, it's difficult to appreciate where it is, it's difficult to appreciate where it runs, but hopefully you get a solid concept now. That is the nerve of the pterygoid canal. That is what it does. It's pretty safe and sound in there. But, um, so it runs from the middle cranial fossa to the deep face. All right, I hope that helped. It's not an easy thing to describe or explain or indeed understand. So um, hey, if I was useful, great. See you next week.